<laughs> Welcome back. We are in a brand new place and we're so excited about it. Today we're coming from Interspace Brewing Company. Um, it is next door to some of the other places we've been so far, but this one is super spacey feeling and I love it. Yes. Super fits with Huntsville. Um, we have the Frangatang. <laughs> That's how I decided to say it. Frangatang. <laughs> it's a patch of fruit guava sour and it is very nice. It, it, it goes down really easy. It, it goes down way too easy. Way too it's easy. It's a warning label. I would have four of these. This is, <laughs> this is a yummy beer. Wow. <laughs> Definitely good for a hot day, I think, you know? Absolutely. And it's getting there. We're getting into summer at this point. Welcome to May, everyone. Um, I have a slight diverse bit of books because I, I do feel we have like a couple holidays that just pass and are coming up. And then something that is more applicable to our fruity beer, um, which is this first one, uh, the Southern Sympathy Cookbook, Funeral Food with a Twist. And it's by uh, Pierre Colvin Magnus. It only came out uh, a couple of years ago, 2018. Mm -hmm. um, what I love most about it is it actually does talk quite a bit about funeral culture in the South. And it's more pervasive than you can expect. Um, but yeah, so funeral food. I chose this one because I like every opportunity I possibly can to suggest this book to anyone. I love it that much. But with our fruity beer, I was like, okay, maybe we should do something fruity. And the chair, there's like a complete chapter in here called for fruits and vegetables, called the Eternal Garden. And all the chapters have kooky little chapter titles like that. But like the Eternal Garden, in the very first recipe in the Eternal Garden is a cornbread salad. Have you ever heard of cornbread salad? No, but it sounds wonderful. <laughs> I thought it sounded strange until I read the preparation. But you know, in the South, anything can be a salad. Anything can be a salad. If it has cornbread, more the better. Yes. Cut the cornbread into small chunks and cover the bottom of a four-quart glass bowl. So this is going to be like a layered salad. Uh. <laughs> then spoon over black-eyed peas. And then next layer on corn then bell peppers, then tomatoes that are halved with the cut sides down. It's important that the cut sides are down. I don't know why. Um, and then sprinkle over bacon, and then cheese, and then your buttermilk dressing, which they also tell you how to make. But I was just like, when I was really through this, I was like, I can't decide if this sounds delicious or scary. I know. It, it sounds wonderful, but... And this recipe serves 15 to 20 people, which I think is a lot. Um, what I like a lot about this book as well is it's very down to earth. It straight up says, yeah, just go buy a couple bags of frozen corn. You can throw it in the colander as a sink and thaw it. Like, it's not terribly high ground. Yeah. So it's cool. That's good. So, that is my direct to beer reference book. Uh, coming up this Sunday, May 9th, is Mother's Day. So I was just like, I need a Mother's Day book. <laughs> And what better thing to do than just proud mama that I am. I got a one-year-old now. So I was like, what do I like? <laughs> I like comic strips. I like Charlie Brown. And I happen to know that we have a Charlie Brown Mother's Day book called Good Grief. It's Mother's Day. Oh. And I really like this one uh, simply because it goes through all of the characters in the Peanuts game. Um... And it highlights, according to the personalities, what they're planning on doing. So, like, Snoopy is writing a letter saying, Dear Mother, I remember the night of my birth. It was a dark and stormy night. <laughs> and Charlie Brown's like, no, you can't write that to your mother. <laughs> um, and then, well, the, I think the one I like the most is actually Peppermint Patty's. Peppermint Patty is at the store. She wants to buy a Mother's Day card for her father. And she explains to um, Marcy that she doesn't have a mother and that her father acts as mother and father to her, so she, he want, she wants to get him a Mother's Day card. I thought that was a very nice little inclusion. That's because, wonderful, yeah. yeah. Not everyone has a mom, and a lot of dads are both mom and dad. So, this is cute. It's in the picture book bin in the youth services section, so... It's one of those ones where you have to... I was going to say, you, you've had fun these past couple I times the going into the picture book. <laughs> I, I, I don't know why. I expected it to be somewhere else. And when I was told there was in picture books, I was like, oh. <laughs> into the bins I die. 
They know our youth services. They can just like walk up to it and just like pull it out. They know exactly where those books are. I can't find it anywhere. Pull it out. Pull it out. Anyway, so that's for Mother's Day. I said we're like surrounded by a couple holidays, and I think this also fits with our inner space brewing company. We just passed May the fourth. And so I was like, well, okay, I'm going to pull out some Star Wars books. Also something I haven't done before, but I probably could. We have a half a million Star Wars novels at the library, both on Overdrive, and um, I think I've seen one or two on Kukla, and of course in hard copy as well. The one I selected is Thrawn. He is a non, what is described as a non-human with blue skin, dark blue hair, and glowing red eyes that have some infrared ability. And he manages to go from someone who existed in the Outer Rim world to, in less than five years, being the Admiral of the Imperial Navy. So it's about his start in the Empire and him trying to understand the politics and the social hierarchies of the Empire. And the odd thing is, is sometimes I find myself sympathizing with him, and I'm like, no one should sympathize with the Empire, right? It's, it's a, it feels a little backwards. So um, it's a great book, it, interesting perspectives, great characters. I do think this is the first in a trilogy, and I say first in a trilogy. This is a canon rewrite from like the 90s. So if you want something more recent, this is great. If you want something that had Thrawn back in the day, go back to the 1990s and look at some of those books. Because they're still, I think, a publication, but they're no longer like canon anymore to the Star Wars universe. So I'm gonna get off that. So that's real fast. <laughs> I got a little excited. Well, we do have a lot of Star Wars books in our collection. <laughs> we do. Though. We do have so, a lot of yeah. Star Wars. What you got? All right. Well, to carry on the space thing. Yep. I also went to Youth Services. This is a yes. young adult biography on Mae Jemison. Now, if you don't know who Mae Jemison is and you're from North Alabama, you need to check this book out and read a little because she is amazing. Like, that gay you play where if you could have dinner with, like, five people living or dead. Yes. The more I have read about her, the more she is topping my list because she is amazing. She is from Decatur. So she's You're pretty right. local, yeah. They yeah. have a high school named after her, you know it. And um, she graduated, or she got into high school at twelve, college at sixteen, became a doctor, general practitioner, went into the Peace Corps, and worked as a GP for a few years before she decided, you know what, I think I might go to NASA and become an astronaut now. And she so, just willingly decided one day, I guess I'll become an astronaut yeah. now. I've done everything else. Yeah. And she's an, she's an avid dancer. She's been doing ballet her whole life to the point where when she, you know, got her home, she put a studio in there. And she choreographs. She does all these things. She's so an awesome. amazing woman. Amazing woman. Yeah. Like, I, I finally understand why she is such a big deal here. I knew a little bit about her, but, yeah, so this... This is a great read for kids. It's very direct, especially if, if somebody wants to do a paper on her. It has a lot of information on it. It's not very big, um, but it, it's you know it's her biography that she wrote, so it's, it's really cool. I, I just I can't say enough about it. But yeah. Did I hear correctly? We're having like a program soon. That's right in June. Uh, we should have it up on our videos of. Uh, Story time at the Space and Rocket Center. Yes, yeah. that'll be so fun. Come check it out and check this book out. And if this book is gone, we do have a lot of other ones. We do have a lot of other ones about her that are children's books. And I went on Hoopla earlier today. We don't have this exact book on Hoopla, but there are a lot of books on Hoopla about her. Uh, if anybody is more interested in learning about her, because I, I think she's just amazing. Yeah, she, she's, she's awesome. So changing gears now, though. So this, uh, this beer to me is like one of those beers you sit in the backyard with. Yeah. Or you sneak into your pool. <laughs> <laughs> or you take to the beach. Sure. This is a sunny time beer. Like yes. this is just like chilling beer. You yes. Know? And so I read this book a long time ago because I got an advanced copy. It just came out at the end of last year. And it's called Mr. Malcolm's List. 
It is a book that is currently being filmed in Ireland. Somebody did like a 20 minute short of just like the first chapter or two of it, and it became such a hit that the studio came back and said, we'll make this into a full length film now. Because it just went viral. People were watching this going, I want to read this book. Um, they casted the Outlander, Sam Hewen. Yeah. They won't say what his role is, but he's in it, so that alone you should <laughs> we're going to be lighting up just to watch yeah. it or read it. But the cool thing about this, so it's a it's a period piece in England. Uh, Mr. Malcolm's a very wealthy man. He's not titled, but he is aristocrat, and he has this set of standards for a wife because he doesn't want a silly wife, you know. Of course. And so he has made a list, and this young woman who he, as a favor, t took out one night, uh, is now hurt because he. Apparently she did not pass the list. And so she and gets one of her girlfriends from school to come visit her and plots to, you know, have him fall for her and then turn it, the tables on him. Sounds like the next big rom-com. Yes. But it's funny. Yeah. It's light. It would go great with this beer sitting around outside. And the cool thing about this is similar to the Bridgertons where they had such a culturally diverse cast, mm -hmm. they're going to do this with this book as well. So right. it should, I think, modernize a lot of you know what what is going on right now with the film industry. Uh, but this will be a full-length feature film. So, and they're currently filming it, so hopefully um, maybe by the end of the year. But we only have one copy in the system, so go ahead and put yourself on hold for it now. Because I'm afraid the whole of this might be lasting for a while with only one book in the system. Yeah. So definitely check that out. Uh, the last book I chose, Stay Engaged, Practicing Empathy. Because May is uh, National um, Mental, Mental Health, Health Awareness Month. Yes. yes. And I know that as a parent myself, you do worry about your kids. Um, so you read up on how to, you know, help your children with this, but how, how is it when you're a child, do you help your friends? Ah. You know, because I know most of us have had friends, if not ourselves, have, have some mental health issues. Mm -hmm. And children have a hard enough time dealing with their own things. How do you teach them that empathy to deal and to help their friends who might be going through it? This is a great book. It is uh, geared towards birth. Fourth through eighth graders. My daughter okay. is a fourth grader. I sat down with her with this book, went over it. She understood the concept of it, got what it was trying to tell her. She had questions, very innocent, you know, nine year old yeah. questions. And it's a very small book. So you're not, you know, I just sat with her for five, ten minutes. And, yeah. And she really enjoyed it. Um, this is part of the series that just read series, which is uh, provides readers with tools on how to practice just mindfulness in life. So I think that's really great to introduce to kids. Is there other books in a similar vein? Yes. Okay. So the series, um, the series will have different books with it. This one is on Who's Club as well. So if you don't get this out of our children's section, uh, check out the Who's Club page. And, but we do have many other books about this as well, which I think is just great to prepare your children with and let them know how to handle certain instances and stuff like that. So. That sounds yeah. like a great set of books. Yeah, I kind of went all over the place too. Yeah, all right. <laughs> um, we have one more episode here to film that we know of so yes. far. Um, we'll have a new set of crazy, random, awesome reads yes. for next time. I've already started my reading. Yes. So oh, man. I need to get on it. <laughs> uh, but thank you so much to Inner Space for hosting us today and for next time. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the library's YouTube page, and we will see you next time.